Welcome, welcome all to an all new episode of Bruise and Banter FC. I'm your co host, Targo, joined by the one and only Redbeard. Join us as we dive deep into the final stages of both the Champions League and the Premier League. But that's not all, folks. As we give our votes for the EPL end of the season awards, Real Madrid win yet another title. Ipswich does the impossible. Players and coaches come to the end of the careers at their respective clubs, and so much more. This is an all-new episode of Bruise and Banter FC, and it starts right now. All right, man. It has been a bit of... It's been a little bit of time since we've done one of these. It's been a few days. It has. We've been busy. It's been a whirlwind of uh, football since then. It has titles decided, relegation decided, coaches leaving, going, finals. We got it all. Yeah, we got it all. What are you drinking it down with today, my friend? What are you digesting all this info with? Man, man, I need a couple for this one. You might need a couple. This this might be a two beer episode. It might be a two beer episode, but unfortunately I only got one. So we'll find out when I finish mine, but... I got Smiling Eyes New England IPA from Humble Abode. Ooh, I love a New England. It is a, one of their it's one of their beers that they donated all the proceeds to charity, so it was pretty cool. Um, oh, that's a great cause. Gotta love I that. don't remember what charity, and it's Courtney, one of the owners. It's her personal beer. She did it herself. It's very good. I've had it before, so I'll just give you the the cliff notes right now. Okay, give us the cliff notes. It it is a it's a very light IPA. Very smooth. It's hoppy on hoppy fruity. on the back end. Not really fruity at all. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's just light and crisp and then hoppy on the back end. Probably seven and a half out of ten. Eight maybe. Okay. How about you, my friend? What are you digesting this episode with? I am digesting this episode with some peanut butter cookie blonde ale. This is from Holy Narrow's. shit. Does that sound good? Narrow's brewing. And it says damn drinkable. Yeah. That sounds damn drinkable. <laughs> so I will admit, we were at the local tap room. The wife was like, ooh, you should get that for the Bruise and Banter FC. And I was like, deal, I will do that. But it says malt forward flavor is perfectly balanced by the unexpected addition of rich, creamy peanut butter flavoring. Mm. Not mm. Nut free, though. Nut free for those uh, folks that are allergic. <laughs> Creating a surprisingly nutty and light-bodied brew, unique, delicious, and irresistible. I poured it into my cup. She came in, had a taste before we started this, and she drank about a quarter of it. So it's not a two-beer episode for me either, man. It was a, a three-quarter beer for me. Yeah, I'm about there. I'm about there. Having said that, that is a very good blonde. No I wonder she drank a quarter of it. She did. I honestly don't taste the peanut butter, but it, I taste the cookie. I taste the cookie, that sweet. Is it maybe a, a peanut butter cookie? Like a little tiny hint of both? No, uh, just, just cookie. It just says peanut butter cookie blonde ale on the thing, but I, I, I'll admit, I don't taste the peanut butter. I feel like a blonde ale is like a little too light to have peanut butter in it. So I guess that makes sense. It is good, though. Yeah. light. It is a light, flavorful drinker. If you want a blonde, I'll give it a good old eight, eight and a half, man. Nice. Probably nice. would buy again. It's a damn good one. It is. Damn good one. But here's a word from our sponsor. Today's episode is brought to you by Acorn Hills Clothing Company. Sustainable clothing, biodegradable packaging, tree planted for every purchase and a percentage of their sales donated to charities. Yeah, and that's not even the best part. They give you these plantable clothing tags with every purchase. Pretty much greatest idea ever. That is awesome. The QR code right here for planning instructions. So make sure you go to www.acornhillsco.com and use Bruise15, that is B-R-E-W-S, one five at checkout for 15 percent off and have your tree planted today yes don't forget to use our code bruce 15 at checkout for 15 percent off this is one you don't want to miss guys now that we heard from ourselves about the lovely acorn hills and the fantastic products they have let's get into some news man 
News, news, news. So we're both wearing the jerseys. Borussia Dortmund, the great Marco Royce, will be leaving Borussia Dortmund at the end of the season after 12 years at the club. Legend, right? Legend of Dortmund. 100%. 100%. I mean, how many great players did he see come and go? Lewandowski, Goetze, Holland, Bellingham, Pulisic. Maybe not a legend. Sancho, Kreuz, Obama Yang, Matt Hummels went there and back. I don't think Kreuz was there, but yes, Matt's Ham- Matt Hummels for sure. I feel like he was, but I guess Bayern at least. He was at Bayern. Yeah, at least. But yes, so many great players have come and gone from Borussia Dortmund, except for the one and only Marco Royce, who I'm going to be honest, the poor guy, as a fantastic career as he's had, has also been very unlucky with some of his injuries <laughs> so unlucky not only injuries but like chances to win trophies he's been so unlucky just like hey germany's gonna win the world cup but i'm gonna get hurt you're not there. before <laughs> yeah. you're gonna be in the champions league final lose numerous occasions you have the chance to win a bundesliga fail but yes, a couple players we forgot was Gundogan, Lewandowski. Yeah. yeah. Oh shit! How did we forget those guys? I know, right? So many great players come out of that. We have them all listed team. too. We missed them all. I mean, I'm not reading that list. I'm being honest. I, this yeah. is coming off straight the dome. Yeah, straight off the but, dome. But I mean, is he gonna go down as the greatest Dortmund player of all time, or at least I mean, kind I, of like that Francesco Totti type player, the yeah, legend, the club Daniela legend? Daniele De Rossi. I guess Roma just seems to have all of the players that just stay for their whole People career. People love Rome, yeah. I, I I guess so. Yeah, I would say so. I, I can't think of anyone that would be better or more dedicated to Dortmund in the history of their club, but I also, you know, they're very a very prestigious and old club. Right, I I have no idea. They've won a ton of titles. I think is Bundesliga for each star. Is that ten titles, five titles, five, five? So they've at least won ten. I I don't I don't know that much about their history to say one hundred percent yes, but I, I'm gonna go with probably. Because I know I well, mean he started his career there. He went off. I think it was to Munchen Gladbach for a couple years, and then came back to Dortmund, where he's literally just been. For forever. Everyone knows him from that one FIFA cover. <laughs> Let's be honest. He got on the cover of FIFA. He did, but his he's one of my favorite players to ever play in the Bundesliga, man. He is so entertaining. His style of play is so I just I love it. You can he does everything. He can play all the way across that front three. Not quite striker, but you know. Outside, right, left. Or yeah, he was end. kind of that winger or attacking midfielder type yeah. player. He plays long balls. He plays short balls. He plays through balls. He scores goals. He puts in crosses. I mean, the man is, dare I say it, man, the myth, the legend, Mark Marco Royce. Royce. So with that being said, he's leaving Dortmund. Where do you think he's going? Man. Is he coming you know to what? MLS? Coming you to already MLS. know what I'm going to say. Stop is taking words out of my mouth. He's gonna, he's gonna go to MLS, MLS. or is he going to go Saudi? MLS. Is he going to Saudi Arabia? I don't Arabia? think I don't he's going to go to Saudi Arabia. I think, I think because of the players that are now in the MLS, being you know Suarez, Messi, mm-hmm. Alba, those guys. I think, I think MLS just makes sense, right? Like he's still going to get a giant payday, He'll be able to live out the rest of his career, getting paid a lot, not playing a lot. And I apparently St. Louis is the rumor destination, which the weather is a lot like Dortmund. So I, you know, anywhere mid whatever they call it Midwest. I that's more e- like East Coast, like Mid East, yeah, Midwest, yeah, kind of, yeah. St. Louis, Chicago, those are like two of the, you know, where the DP slots are designated player. LA's already got too many. Nah, Miami bro, watch him just spit him. in the face of Dortmund fans. He's gonna go to Schalke. He's going to Bundesliga too. Forget it. I don't think so. I I'm joking. Nah. I, but I mean, like he could go to Mucha Gladbach. Like, oh, he could. Been there before. Not a terrible fit. But that I is, think I will give you credit. That is your notes, not mine. That's yours. But I, that's a good shout. I just think. At this point struggling. in his career. Luchin Gladbach has been struggling in the Bundesliga. They could use an experienced 
player. He's been there he before. So it's not, you know, he's disrespecting Dortmund in any way. No, I just think, I think it's, he's played for one team his entire career, pretty much. He's going to go to a different Minus league Ujigleman. where he will not play against Dortmund. I think that is the part that he does not want to do. Watch Dortmund come play a friendly in the United States and play St. Louis. I wouldn't yeah. doubt that 100%. <clears throat> Me neither. But speaking of the Bundesliga, we're going to say there because honestly, that might be my new favorite league this season is the Bundesliga. 100%. Yeah. Because of one team, let's be honest, Bayer Leverkusen, who are taking the Bundesliga by storm. Could they have an invincible season? We'll see. There's a few games left, but it's looking like they might do it, man. They are 48 unbeaten. It's 49. 49 unbeaten. Okay. Okay. After they yes. drew Roma, they just spanked Frankfurt last weekend. I mean, are they going to do it? They have three games left, man. Like to do it, not only three okay, games, so, three games for a treble and an undefeated. So season. that's what's un- that's what's crazy is not only is it Bundesliga undefeated, but they're in the Europa League, final. also undefeated, Against and in Atalanta. the final. Yeah. That's and what's nuts to me, man. It's not only is it out, Bundesliga, well. but European competition, their cup competition. I Everything. mean, that's unheard of. When was the last time this happened? I don't know. I'd have to freaking uh, dig through I, the internet. Something like like 29 years ago. No, 49 years ago. Something like that where Ben so we have not been alive 48 to see this. games that's un- cool. unbeaten. So not in our lifetimes. That's for sure. But, I mean, just, just the sheer – determination from this squad i mean they drew in the 97th minute again against again Rome. only the 12th again, time credit this to granite jaka with the assist for this one but i think it was patrick 90, Schick, if i'm not mistaken you were right Ooh. 97th minute to tie they were down two to one i think it was two they were down two nil they were down yeah. two nil against and roma they brought it back which against roma. tied the tie because they were up two nil from the first leg so they gave two goals back and then scored two more. It's the 11th time they've scored in stoppage time this season. 11th. 11th. I hope I people saw some are taking notice where... of this, man. Because this is history. This is literal history. Literal history. And I saw something somewhere where it was like 29% of their goals this season have happened after the 85th minute. They've been scoring late for fun, so I'm not surprised by that. That's insane. They've scored like 130-something goals this season. But also going back to this history, I mean, this is something people are going to recall on for 20, 30 years from now. Probably longer than that. I mean, you got Javi Alonso coming in last season when they're in the relegation zone. They were mid-season, and he came in in October. Relegation zone. Not only that, but this Bayer Leverkusen side has won their first title Ever, 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 but to, not only what almost gonna, undefeated, yeah, invincible, undefeated, and possibly win a treble, win all their other trophies without losing. It's just that's nuts. I, I kind of hope they do it at this point for the history. I hope they do it, and I hope they do it like not go undefeated, but win competitions next year again. I, I do too, especially Javi Alonso. I, he's gonna get that money when he goes he's to Real get that Madrid. He's gonna get that Real Madrid job. <laughs> Yeah, and he's going to have the best squad on planet fucking Earth at that the point. The Killian Mbappe, Jude Bellingham, yeah. yeah. I don't want to hear – okay, we'll get into that later. I don't want to yes, hear nothing will. about Killian Mbappe. Okay, nothing. no Killian Mbappe talk. Well, let's talk. Let's talk about – hey, if anyone's a fan of music, Ed Sheeran's team. Do you guys know what that is? Well, I'll let you know what it is. It is Ipswich Town, who are headed to the Premier League. Promoted after their 2 0 win against Huddersfield, completing their back to back to promotion. And they are in the Premier the League for the first time in 22 years. 22 years. But not only that, no one has really done that before. Gone from League One, get promoted, go and win the championship the next year. Holy well, cow. They didn't win what the championship, it? but they got promoted in the championship. I think they came in second, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah, you're right. Leicester City. Leicester, yeah. Right. But they got promoted, nonetheless. But we'll get into this at the end of the episode, more about Manchester United. But what a job Kieran McKenna has done, going from assistant up, coach man. of Thumbs Manchester United up 
to getting Ipswich Town promoted at Portman Road, man. Like the style of play they play too, it's phenomenal. They well, might be I, my new favorite team to watch, and the, they might be the new Luton if Luton get relegated. Oh, uh, dude, don't get me started on Luton. We'll talk about them also because I do think they're getting relegated. Yeah, unfortunately, <sighs> unfortunately, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. but yes. So the championship playoffs have been set as Leeds United will play Norwich City, and Southampton will play West Brom to see who will play in the basically as we and as it's called the world's richest match to be promoted to the premier league. Yeah. Pretty so much out of those four gets... teams. Out of those four I... teams. Who do you think's making it? Yeah. Who do you who got? Do who do you got, man? Who I want? Cause they're two different things. I think, I think it'll be Leeds and Southampton in the final. Okay. Who do you and want? I think, then? I think Southampton will make it back. Who do I want? Ooh. I want fucking West Bromwich Albion. They has been a while for them. Huh? I want West Brom. I want West Brom back. I love the purple and white kits, man. Premier League doesn't have anything like that. They, have, they I don't, don't get no see... purple and white. There's like the blue and white strips. Maybe their weight kit man. might be purple. Purple. That's their colors. Purple and white. I'm going with Leeds. I'm all the way. Yeah. I mean, Le- Leeds is Leeds has got the history, man. Although I feel like Norwich, man, are just that top C Turby team where they're just flip flopping from championship to Premier League. I, I love seeing it. Although they always have the world's ugliest jersey, so I don't say no. <laughs> that yellow green. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not a good combo. I mean, unless you're the Seattle Supersonics, not a good combo. Oh, bring it back. Okay, <laughs> showing your roots. I love it. For those who don't know, Seattle Supersonics were a former NBA team here in uh, yeah. Seattle, Washington. Yeah. No one cares. It's fine. No one cares. Okay. Well, let's move on to some Premier League awards, man. So the EPL player, manager, and youngster of the season have come out. I don't want to list all of them. I just want to know who gets your vote. Okay. Well, uh, you want to start young player of the season then? Sure, I guess I'll list them. Let me just list them. We got Phil Foden. A lot of them are the same for the players. Alexander Izak, Kobe Mainu, Cole Palmer, Bukayo Saka, William Saliba, Destiny Udogi. Who gets your young player of the season? I mean... I'm going to give you an answer, but I'm also going to say that it's going to depend on who wins the title. Okay. It, it really It kind of does. Like, I it almost really hate is. doing these now. Like, we need to wait yeah. a couple weeks almost. Yeah. I'll give you my preemptive vote because we'll talk about it later again. Just tell me as of, now, as, of right now, as of right now, William Saliba. William, William Saliba. Saliba. Okay. I'm going to go Cole Palmer for a player, young player of the season. Good shout. Good shout. I'm going to say Cole. He, I mean, don't get me wrong. Penn Merchant. Yes, I know. Playing He's for been a, performing for a shit team. He has, again. And has been the one bright spot of a shit team. So I'll give he's you the, He's the one bright spot. Again, they are a shit team. They're sitting mid-table, so I can't give him player of the season. But I will give him young player of the season. It's fair. As long as it's not the same person winning youngster and player of the season. Like it is last not. Season, which was a highway robbery. So I'm, It is not. Yeah. So player of the season, we have Phil Foden, Erling Holland, Alexander Isak, Martin Odegaard, Cole Palmer, Declan Rice, Virgil van Dijk, and Ollie Watkins. I'm going Ollie. fucking Ollie Watkins, Ollie Watkins man. Watkins, my I'm man. going fucking yeah. Ollie Watkins. 31 goal contributions this season. The man is on fire. Stats-wise, clears everyone. Clears yeah. them fucking Clears all. everyone. Not only all that, he took a... I'm going to say it because I predicted them to finish Champions League spot. And it's looking like they will. Aston Villa's team to the Champions League. Credit Unai Emery. But, I mean, we'll go through the stats really fast. because I have Okay, go through them quickly. No phone, 32 appearances, 16 goals, 8 assists. So that's 24 goal contributions. Erling Holland, 28 appearances, 30 goal contributions. Alexander Izak, 27 appearances, 21. Martin Odegaard, 33 appearances, 8 goals, 8 assists. That's not why he's on there. Cole Palmer, 30 in 31 appearances. Not bad. Declan Rice was at 15 in 36 appearances, but that's not why he's on here. Virgil van Dijk, 8 clean sheets, 2 goals, and 34. And then Ollie Watkins, 35 appearances, 31 goal contributions. 
I will say though, if Arsenal can win that title, Declan Rice Declan has a good Rice, show. It's my vote. Yeah. He has a good show. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm still either way, I think Ollie Watkins in the next two weeks gets at least three goal or assists with goal contributions and his steers clear. Unless Erling Holland scores fucking five two goals. Tricks. Goals. Yeah. Motherfucker, <laughs> get the fuck out of here, the you robot. asshole. I think Ollie Watkins gets it, and he should. He deserves it. I do, too. I'm just saying. I do, too. So let's go to manager, then. Our, Mikel Arteta, Unai Emery, Pep Guardiola, Anthony Iraola, and your uh, Klopp. Yeah, Jurgen Klopp. Jurgen Klopp. I, I'm going to go I'm gonna go Unai Emery. I am, too. Yeah. I mean, Iraola would be my second bet. And if Arsenal wins, I, I guess I'd probably put Arteta second. But it's got to be Emery. Unai Emery. The squad he has, they're playing in Europe for the first time in a long time. They don't have a very no. deep squad, and they're still, still in fourth place. They made it to the semifinals of the Conference League, and then, yes, fourth place, comfortably seven points. The injuries, man, the injuries. Like Everybody's had them, but they already didn't have very much depth. They lost Wendia for, like, a majority of the season. Tyrone yeah. Mings, ACL in, like, what, the second or so game? Yeah, he still hasn't played. <clears throat> we've all seen the Instagram video of the fucking atrophy from his left foot leg to his right leg. It's so bad. It's like, I was like, and that <laughs> it was, it was literally guy lost half a leg. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It, it's crazy. And Unai Emery, like props on your second go around in the premier league. You deserve it. But speaking of, Second time going around. Let's get into the Champions League semifinal. Champions League! Let's do it, dude. Second time going around. We got Dortmund and PSG. And the reason why I said second time going around is Borussia Dortmund are into the final for the second time in 11 years. That's why we're repping the Dortmund jerseys. Let's go. So let's break it down. Let's start with the first leg because I know we didn't cover the first leg. We'll just cover rematch it all, the, man. We'll just do it all. Rematch of the group stage. Holy crap, did both teams miss a shit ton of chances in this one. So, yes, you and I both watched the first leg at No Lie Brewing. Shout out. Love their Sasha beer. Shout out. Yeah, oh, good job. So, it was a interesting first leg. It was. Yeah, I mean, it was. I feel like Nicholas Fult, both teams should have scored goals. Like, the post was hit. Nick, chances missed. Nicholas Fulkrug took advantage of I thought, honestly his most difficult opportunity that fantastic control the ball over the missed, top fantastic, missed his easiest fantastic one. Finish. I, I yeah know right I was, I was like Whoa. they got the job done in the second leg or in the first leg second leg comes around and i was worried for dortmund i'm gonna be honest with you man the intensity in the first leg like right out the gate was crazy jane sancho was amazing kareem Yemi, fucking Hustling his ass off, playing defense, trying to get and forward. I'll go, I'll go to the other side. Vitinha, how good was he? Both so, matches. Vitinha for me for PSG is the player of this round. Like He's, I know Kylian Mbappe was on the pitch, but he was not the best player over the two le- this this leg. But, but it where was Vitinha. Where was Dude, he? I don't fucking know. He was off <laughs> sipping martinis and somewhere. He's like, hey, guys, I'm already, my brain's already in Madrid. He's looking forward to some margaritas in Spain. I don't I don't know, man. I'll meet you guys at Wembley. I won't be wearing a PSG kit. I'll be wearing a Madrid kit. <laughs> That's pretty much what he's saying. <laughs> I mean, guy missed some open up opportunities. He hit the post. I mean, a lot of PSG players hit the post. The word Yeah. Was I mean, literally the man of the match, probably for the second leg. Let's be honest. Over the two legs, I would even say. I mean, they hit the post six times over six two times. legs. Six times. Four times in the second leg. Yeah. Four. I will say the Mbappe one was probably the only one that had a chance of going in. The rest of them, you I would scuffed say, it, man. Poor, poor finishing or like attempts from distance. Oh, that the Mendes in the second leg and that Vatini. Oh, dude, that Vatini one almost deserved to go in. It I hate almost to- did. Yeah, it almost it did. I hit. mean, he had Zaire Emery hit the post. And as soon as he hit the post and Dortmund got a goal kick, I was like, watch them go down the field and score. The, and the guess terrible what part was when Emery <laughs> hit the post in the second leg, like Goncalo Ramos, man, should have scored. Had a terrible. At least three or four goals. Terrible for such. Terrible game. But like Dortmund immediately go down the field, get a corner. 
And Father Time himself, Matt's Hummels, heads the ball in the back of the net. Father Father Time Time himself. I I swear to God for PSG, it's like when they got bought by their new owners, they made a deal with the devil to get Kylian Mbappe. Because literally nothing went right in both legs. Like they should have had like seven or eight goals. Nothing. It's like there was a force field. They said, nope. The devil's like, I'm taking my dues now. You are not going to the Champions League final. No, thank you. That's what they said. You're not wrong. Yeah. But are you surprised at how good Dortmund's been in the Champions League this season? Um, super fucking surprised compared <laughs> to how they've performed in the Bundesliga, where they're like, I'm going to have to look it up. I they think got, they're fifth or they're sixth. Fifth, and they already got a Champions League spot. They got the fifth spot. Oh, yeah, because Germany's been kicking ass in their competitions. Yep. So good for them. At least they'll be in the Champions League next year. They got that going for them. But yes, they have very much underperformed in the Bundesliga. But this is two different teams, man. You have Bundesliga Dortmund, and then you got motherfucking Champions League Dortmund. Yeah, I, I mean, know. So this I, is a Dortmund, I don't think I've ever... Yeah. This is a Dortmund team that was in the group of death that neither you or I predicted to even get out of this group. I said, didn't we pick them to get last? We picked them to get last, yes, in this group with PSG, AC Milan, Newcastle, and then Dortmund. And they finished first in their group. They are now in a Champions League final. If this is not the most ultimate underdog story, I can think of one. I can think of one. One of the most ultimate underdog stories. I don't know what it is, man. I think maybe two I can think of. Okay, Leicester City, yes. And Bayer Leverkusen this season. But I mean, this is just incredible. This is this was a team that was in a group that honestly, probably most people did not predict for them to get out. Who are now in the final? They have beat PSG. I don't even remember who they beat in the other Atletico. Atletico. PSV. That's it. Yeah, I I just it's so amazing. I mean, the, some of these guys on this team, these on Dortmund, like Mats Hummels is playing like he's twenty years old again. Jim Jane Sancho, Sancho has a new leaf of life, yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's more because United's a mess, and we'll get to that later. But, you know, if you have no confidence where you're playing and you go to the place you're familiar with and you start playing like that again, I think there's something to be said there. But, yeah, I just – this Dortmund squad, man, I, I'm going to be rooting for them all the way, and I hope they win the Champions League final so that way we have an all-German Super Cup next season. With kudos, that being said, my friend, kudos at Interzich. Yeah. Before we get to the Bayern and Madrid game, I got one question for you. Ooh, what's your one question? Because Mbappe is leaving PSG. Is the PSG experiment a failure? So, what is the PSG experiment? I mean, they've had superstars, right? Cavani, have, yeah. Ibrahimovic, Ronaldinho, Messi, Neymar, Mbappe, they've spent billions of doll, billions of euros, billions of pounds, whatever you want to call it. They've kind of changed their tune in recent seasons as far as spending so much money. Now that Mbappe is leaving, we have a period of time that PSG has dedicated to spending the most money in all of Europe on players. Now that that one last player is leaving, is that experiment a failure? I don't know if I'd call it a failure because it's got them global recognition with some of the players they've got. Obviously, when you have a Kylian Mbappe, a Lionel Messi, it gets exposure to other countries, you know, especially player people who have followed those players. You know, they look at the big names, the best players in the world. They want their jerseys. They follow that team. That's kind of the reason why Saudi Arabia has had quite the bit of growth. Yeah, because they've yeah. been getting the big players. Having said that, obviously they wanted a Champions League PSG. I do think they've changed their tune. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're buying quite those older, more well-recognized players. Yeah, they're They're developing a lot of players. They're starting to develop younger or get French players, which I think is the right track for them. I really do. Having said that, I do think Kylian Mbappe, as of right now, I mean, I'll say it, he is the best PSG player that they've ever had. Of all time, yeah. Of all time for PSG, yes. Yeah. And I think he should leave. I really do. But again, he came from Monaco, went to PSG, became their best all-time player. And so I wouldn't I don't know if I'd call it a failure, but I would say they're they're starting they've they've learned. I would say PSG has learned 
from what they used to do in the past, find the big name superstars to really developing a team that can challenge and potentially win a Champions League. Okay. One more question before I give you my answer. Are they better off without Mbappe? I think they will be in the long run. Yeah, I, I agree. That's too much money, too many wages, too much power for one player. And I think that the PSG experiment with all these stars building around stars and signing big name players is a complete failure. Complete failure. You spend all of this money on players to bring you a Champions League, but teams aren't built around one person. This isn't the NBA where you're playing with five players on a team. This is 11 players. You can't just win a title, well, besides the French Ligue 1. You can't win a Champions League with one player. So that experiment phase of it is a failure. They know what they're doing now, and I agree with you. I think going forward, they will be much better off, and I think they might even get to a Champions League final without Mbappe. Okay, my friend. To Mbappe's future destination, Bayern Munich and Real Madrid. And before we even get into this, I just want to thank Real Madrid for four of the best legs of football I've ever seen. Amazing. Against Man City. Two against Man City, two against Bayern. So first leg ends in a draw, 2-2. We got Vinny Jr. bookending goals from Leroy Sané and a Harry Kane penalty kick. First leg, was it a fair result being 2-2? Honestly, yeah. I thought Bayern Munich actually played really well. I did too. I did too. And then, you know, ultimately the penalty kick, for that Vinny Jr. scored, Kim and Jay. Dude, the guy had a horror of a game. And we'll get more into him when we get to the second leg. But is he a failed signing at this point? I don't know where it so went wrong, man. He looks so good in Italy for Napoli. How does he now look so bad for Bayern in the Bundesliga? I don't know, man. It's We've talked about it before on this podcast, right? We like, have. Language, we could have. be a language barrier, new system, could be new Thomas league. Tuchel. New Lee, I don't know, but he is, I don't even want to shadow. call him a shadow. I don't He's even a want shadow. to He's a shadow. Whatever is below a shadow. The ground, nothing. He is awful. He like is Upa nothing McConnell like makes, himself. <laughs> he makes Upa Makano look good this season, and he's been notoriously awful this season. I don't so. know, man. At least Upa Makano, or at least Kim and Jay is getting it subbed in, not Upa Makano, but I don't, yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. He's He's been bad. So Real bad. let's get into the second leg. Madrid win two to one, not without controversy, but let's go into first the goalkeeping in this match. Until the 75th minute when Me, Alfonso Davies scores, Alfonso Davies scores. Oh, it was impeccable. Was like... like the amount of saves between Lunin and Neuer was Amazing. You can't blame Lunin, though, for that Alfonso I'm Davies not, goal. I'm not. I'm just saying, up until that point, I would go, probably you're right, probably the 87th minute when Madrid finally score. I think the goalkeeping was, it, like, some of the best I've ever seen. Not bad. And it was I not mean, bad. I mean, Neuer made saves, Lunin made saves, but that Alfonso Davies goal, I mean, Rudiger showed him inside on his weaker foot. It was like, good luck, man. Have a hit. Yeah. Alfonso yeah, Davies was like, bam, here's a belter. You'll find it hard to find a sweeter strike than that. His first goal in the Champions League, League in how many yeah. years they said? I mean, not only that, but, are low, but goddamn, he did. But it. not only that, but he's been injured or out of form all season. All season. All season. So credit to Rudiger. I would have done the same thing. But then Jose Lu, man. Jose Lu. We get to Jose Lu, Madrid scoring two late goals. Fucking Don Carlo is like, you know what? Minute. It's like the 75th, 80th minute. Don Let's Carlo go. goes. He brings out the eyebrow. <laughs> He's been watching The Rock on some WWE. He stuff. literally stands there like this and brings out the eyebrow. And then all of a sudden, Real Madrid are like. And then he knows. He's winning. like, I've been in this like, situation. I have how many Champions Leagues? More than anyone yeah. else. Let me just put Jose Luan, Brahim Diaz. Let's just yeah. let's put I, this game on. Luka Modric. And then, Brings on Luka and, then Modric, yeah. and then Byron puts on Kim and Jay. Takes off Harry Kane. Takes, takes off, off Jamal Harry Musiala. Kane. Takes off fucking Leroy They, were, Sané, they showed you know. all their cards. They said, we're playing defense. Score on us. And Manuel no, Neuer we'll goes. Score two. <laughs> Manuel Neuer goes. Here, here's one. Sir, have one. <laughs> Literally, 
first off, his throw out. Oh, the throw out the wing yeah. was awful. Which the allowed Real Madrid to win the ball back. Vinny Jr. Bro, just boot shot. that. Why does he just him boot him? that? Give him some time. Pull like any Put the goalkeeper ball on normally. That side of the field, fall, damn it. Fall on the ball. Just fall on it. Waste time. I know you know the dark arts. And then, yeah, boot it as far as you can. And you don't have to worry about this. But no, he decides to throw it out. Real Madrid win the ball back. And Vinny Jr. hits a shot. Hits him in the chest. And then the hands and rolls right to Spills Hosulu. Spills it, man. Spills it. Puts it right. To make things worse, he puts it right between his legs, man. Right, right between to, his legs. Right at the Jose Lulo for <laughs> following up. And we'll get more into him should do. the second one. Because also... Bringing back the classic number nine with Hosulu. That Rudiger, Rudiger one, with the assist, man. Rudiger with the assist. And he celebrated like he scored it. Fucking Rudy. But Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. Real Madrid, I mean, they kept playing. They thought they scored via, like the ref called off sides. Because I'm going to tell a story because it's going to get into Tell the your next story, game. man, because it's going to come back. It's going to come back. And, you know. The, re- the linesman kept his flag down. They scored. He puts his flag up. Ref blows the whistle for offsides. VR looks at it. He's not offsides. It's a goal. Two to one in extra time. And we have, what was it, nine minutes? And it ended up being like 15, but whatever. Yes. <laughs> and then Bayern go down the field. And a ball gets played in. I don't remember by who. Mueller goes for it, but the defender heads it back. Mueller and then, heads it for, yeah. And then... Heads it to Delict. Del- anyways, Delict puts it in the net, but the ref put his... Fl- the AR put his flag up for Mueller, and the ref blew his whistle. Killed it. Killed it. We've seen so many times throughout all of the leagues and all of football that assistant ref... Uh, the linesman... Let's play go until the play is done and then puts the flag up. But this time he puts his flag up immediately. First, I'm going to ask, what the fuck? Second, did you think Mueller was on sides? Because, you know, we're going to debate that. So I've seen some of the pictures. Was he outside? Was he outside? I don't know. It's tough with the angle I've seen because obviously you can't tell because you're a little bit behind the play. It kind of looks like he. It's close. That's all I can say. It's it's close. Having said that, the linesman, yes, made a mistake. Put it up too early. Should have waited three, five seconds, something like that. Just one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. Could, could have waited five seconds, and the ball would have the, been in the net. As far as the the match official referee, he sees a flag go up, so it is his job to blow his whistle. Yeah, obviously he cannot see that angle, the offsides angle. So I have I no don't fault with him one bit. And having said ties- that. Again, the linesman made a mistake, 100%. But you also saw Delic, he made the shot, scored it. The Real Madrid players, the goalkeeper, they stopped. They really did. Do I think it would have mattered in the long run? No. Because even if he scores that, they go to extra time. I think Madrid's winning it. 100%. But it is a mistake from the linesman. Yeah, and Matthias Delic did come out in his post match interview and said the linesman came up to him and apologized, saying he made a mistake, which sucks. It does because VR wasn't allowed to get involved to even determine if it was offsides or not. I agree with you. I think Real Madrid still would have won. They deserve to win. So I, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying, linesman made a mistake. Linesman made a mistake. Yeah, he made a mistake. And then to finish on Real Madrid because they've been so amazing this season. Wait, hot. Is the Ballon d'Or destined to go close. to Madrid? Destined to go to Madrid? It might be, man. So I was actually thinking about this today. Before this whole thing. Like, okay, if I were to make a European... You know, you mentioned it earlier. Like, our Champions League 11. Like, on that left wing, who's there? Is it Vinny or Mbappe? It's Vinny. 100%. I'm looking after these this leg of the <laughs> Champions League semifinals. It's Vinny. Yeah. I mean, we'll get there when we get to the Champions League final, when all of the dust settles and everything. We'll get to our Ballon d'Or favorites, who we think is going to be there. But, like, if you right now could give me a top five, who a would your five, five players be? Vinny Jr. In no on particular there. order. In no, no order. order. Vinny Jr. is on there. Jude Bellingham's on there. Harry Kane, Kylian Mbappe. 
and maybe Holland, Foden, but I'm going to say Florian Verts. Okay. Well, I'm going to go Vinny Jr., Florian Verts, Jude okay. Bellingham, Harry Kane, and then I got three, depending on the rest of the season, how it goes. Ooh. Victor Gukaretz. Butchered his name, but okay, I know you're talking did. about. Declan Rice and Phil Foden. Okay. No Mbappe, because all he did was score a bunch of goals in France, and half of his goals came against Gibraltar. So, no. Get out of here. <laughs> he also did not play the best. Like, for example, PSG oh, yeah. against games, Barca. I mean, he scored nothing. a goal, but Barca, that, dude, that Barca game was just destroyed nothing. by that red card. He is. Yeah. Anyways. Well, let's move on to the Premier League, man. Let's talk relegation in the Premier League. We have, well, let's talk about Luton Everton. They played recently. Luton, Everton, Drew, 1-1. I think Luton are doomed, man. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is, I mean, we're going to cover it here in a second, but Nottingham Forest beating Sheffield United, getting three points above them. Luton just drawing to go level with them at that point. I, Yeah. And then, you know, I, there's been a lot of controversy about the Everton penalty. I'm just going to say it right now. Mangy literally picks up Braithwaite. And carries him. So it's a penalty. Like I saw his leg no, dangle. You go like, here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When his leg went up in the air and like, he literally like, this? like went lamp was like, carry me, daddy. Yeah. And then he went to a different spot. I'm like, that's a penalty. I, I don't care what anyone says. I, so I feel bad for Luton. I love them. I mean, Loney Albert Samby Laconga in this match was fantastic. Ross Barkley has been fantastic. Ross Barkley all season for has them. got a rejuvenation of his career. So, yeah, Luton, I'm sorry you're all but relegated after this one. It takes a miracle for you to make it. You got to win both your games and and or draw one, win one, and not in for it. has got to lose both. So, Yeah, and the tough part is, man, is they play West Ham and Fulham. So yeah, maybe two, against Fulham. Two, two, can... West Ham is still flirting with flirting. I'm going to say that flirting with European competition. So they Fulham might have really have this, nothing Fulham. to play for. Maybe Fulham's got nothing. So, but they've been really good. So I think they win that. Well, let's get to the team below Burnley. They are relegated, man. I mean, they lost to Newcastle one, four. They battered them. Newcastle. I mean, yeah. yeah. Newcastle looked like the team we thought they were going to be all season. That's finally, finally. Yeah, they. I mean, Newcastle, they're in sixth. Probably going to finish there, if I'm being honest, sixth. Yeah, I mean, mathematically, they still can finish above Tottenham. They have three games left. They're four points behind Tottenham. Do I think they're going to pass them? I don't know with the way Tottenham's playing right now. So They play I'm... Brighton, Man United, and Brentford, Brentford and Tottenham. So they have four games left. It says three. Oh, three. Sorry. Brighton, Man United, Newcastle, or Brentford. There you go. So, yeah, and then Tottenham play City, and I don't know who else. It doesn't really matter. They're just awful right now. So we'll see. I, I think they're going to get European competition either way. We'll see if it's Europa League or the Conference League. And the other two teams in that relegation battle, Lightning Forest, Sheffield. Forest just spanked Sheffield. Forest Sheffield's sitting down pretty. The, down the drain fast. Yep. Forest sitting wanna, pretty. Yeah. I want to shout out because you said, remember a couple weeks ago, maybe more than that, when I asked you when Arsenal beat Sheffield United 6 0, if they would concede 100 goals or more for the end of the, till the end of the season, and you said no. They've officially conceded 100 goals this season with two games. Two games left for them. About so. to concede the most goals ever. About to make <laughs> history. Right history. And that's like 42 games, not 38. So, just saying. Yeah, you're not wrong. They are, uh, if they concede any more goals, about to beat the record. Right. Okay, let's get into the title race because we go from one end of the table to the other. Arsenal, batter Bournemouth. They fortify the title credentials, beating them 3-0. Not without controversy, as it seems like that's all I'm talking about today. Ryan Christie. Let's talk about him first. Did he deserve a red card on his tackle on Bukayo Saka? Dirty tackle at least deserved a foul, because the foul was not given. 
deserved a yellow card. Yeah. But I don't think a red card, because I don't think he endangered Sokka. It was a nasty tackle, don't get me wrong. But Sokka's leg was up. They were both challenging for a ball. So I don't think it was a red. I, I agree. He should have definitely had a yellow card and probably eight or nine other chances where he should have got a yellow card and somehow yes, didn't take yeah. one until the 87th minute of this match. I don't understand it. That's a lot of controversy there. Okay, second, the penalty decision. Was it a foul? I don't like it, if I'm being honest. Havertz is dragging his leg. I don't like it. For Personally, me, it's... it's like, why, it's, why, why not just stay on your feet, man? Why not just stay I, on I your understand feet? that. I understand that. For me, it's whatever gets called on the field is going to stand, right? If it doesn't get given, people are like, yeah, whatever. If it gets given, people are like, yeah, whatever. Because the goalie comes out and makes a challenge on him, whether he pulls back or not. So Kai Havertz is like, yeah, come make a challenge on me, bro. But at the same time, who runs like that, dragging their foot? Yeah, I mean, he he made an attempt to make sure he fell down. I'm going to say that out loud. Kind of reminded me of that Harvey Elliott penalty against Liverpool. I agree. And then should Bournemouth have been awarded a goal? Yeah. Yeah. I do. Yeah, I do think that so. One, that the ref bailed him out. Yeah, he did. It definitely for once seemed like the ref was on Arsenal's side in this match. But again, Ryan Christie should have been booked at least three times before the 87th minute. And then I want to talk about the disallowed goal. Not the Bournemouth one, but the Arsenal one. How good was Gabrielle's strike on that goal? That was ultimately offsides. Oh, yeah, he was offside. Oh, yeah, it was so, strike, it was so good. Fantastic strike, though. Fantastic strike. All right, let's get into Man City, my friend. Fucking Enjoy Erling, Brute, Holland, first Brute of, Holland. second of his name, first of his Scorer name, whatever goals. you want to call it, scorer of goals. Scores oh, four, my God. comes back. With a vengeance, my friend. So I'll be straight honest with you, man. I watched the first half of this game and said, fuck this shit, and turned it off. As I soon as City got the penalty for the first one, I said, fuck it, I turned it off. So did both penalty kicks, should they both have been awarded? First one, no. Second one, yes. I agree also. I still think City would have won this game by a lot. Oh, 100%. And I think they were do it. So, yeah. Collins, that one he scored from outside the box, his fourth goal. That was sick. That was sick. Um, sick goal. Any any way to describe this other than a mauling? No. Or any hope for Fulham this weekend? No. City have won their last 15 against Fulham, by the way. Yeah. How I about hope, this? City I hope they can drop been, points. They've been starting to catch Arsenal on goal difference. Is that what it's going to come down to? Yep. And you just said, I hope so. So Probably. I mean, I... I no, because I hope City draw a game at least. But I I don't see them losing, man. It just fucking sucks. It, it does. As an Arsenal fan. All right. Let's talk about banter clubs, man. Because there's a few. We got Chelsea. We got Tottenham. We got Man United. I mean, so much to talk about with so little time. So let's get into it. Chelsea, I mean, they spanked West Ham. They beat Spurs recently. I mean... I'm, I'm going to say it. I am going to say it. Chelsea, outside that Arsenal game, have been in good form this year. Calendar year. Ca- this since 2024. Yes. Yeah, I will agree with that, man. And, you know, they're playing good, except for when Cole Palmer doesn't play, which is that Arsenal game. Which is that Arsenal game. Their last loss before that was February. So, I mean, some months. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, they've been playing seventh. good. They're couple seventh. shutouts in a row. Yeah, seventh. Two points behind Newcastle. I mean, they got three games left, as does all the teams around them. Winnable games a, for them. Forest, again, Brighton, Bournemouth. Yeah, again, they, they could finish in a European spot. Could. Could. We'll see. Yeah. We'll hope for Pochettino there with this young. I mean, squad. we both said they were going to be fourth, so they're making us look better and better every time. Thank God, man, because that was a terrible yeah. fucking guess. Yeah, I was worried. I was worried. So kind of a bit of surprise result that we want to mention was when Brighton beat Villa one nil, hurting kind of Villa's top four chances slightly. Yeah, but also I mean, Brighton, dude. More, more so Brighton. They fucking needed that win. They are hurting for points. 
I think it was their first win since March, if I'm not mistaken. It's only May. That's cool. Yeah, no big deal. Good for them. They needed that before they, you know, inevitably, if they didn't win that match, they would have been down towards like 13th, 14th. So, yeah, I, I good win for them. Terrible loss for Villa, right, when they only need two points to secure a Champions League spot and playing I mean, Liverpool this weekend. So You're not wrong, but we also know, or at least we think with much certainty, that they'll finish in a Champions League spot. Do you think... I'm going to put your get your crystal ball out. Get your crystal ball out. Yeah. So for next season, it looks like they'll be in Champions League. Do you think we'll see a regression with them like we did in Newcastle this year? I'm going to go with no, because they're going to have a bunch more money to spend. And I think they will spend it. I'm going to say yes, that we will see that slight regression due to the competitiveness of the Champions League versus the Premier League. Yeah, I mean, if you were going to ask me, do I think they're going to make it out of the group stage? I would say probably not. Which is why I say I don't think we'll see much of a regression. But Okay. That's the only reason why. Well, let's get to the big team here that's been making news, and that is Manchester United. We love talking about them. Manchester United, it's your buddy Corey's favorite team. He's a diehard Man United fan. Let's talk about them because they just lost 4 0 to Crystal Palace at Silver. Yeah, this is this this United team is a team of firsts. The first United team to ever win lose 13 games in the Premier League. First United team to ever have a negative goal. Um what's it? Goal differential. Difference. Goal difference, yeah. yep, they're negative. First United team to ever lose twice to Crystal Palace in the same season. The worst placement of United team in Premier League history. The most goals allowed since like the 1970s. I mean, I keep going. Keep going. I, I'm this loving is too it. easy. It's I got too another easy, little, little sip here left. Yeah. Go ahead, man. Like, people are saying Aaron T- Eric Ten Hag, man, he's been awful. I mean, he's done a lot of things for the first time ever. So, I feel like he's done a really good job and he should probably <laughs> stay as a United coach. I just But I mean, at this point, obviously <laughs> Ten Hag's leaving. Like, can we agree to that at least? Like Ten Hag's probably leaving. Yeah, I'm going to agree, they, but I have? don't Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to say this now so that way it's on the record so you can't be like you didn't say that. Okay. I think they're not going to fire him. I think Bayern Munich will hire him. Ten Hag. Yeah. Watch. And then Tuchel is going to go to Man United, huh? I don't know about that because Gareth Southgate apparently is the favorite. But I think that Bayern Munich are going to try to sign him. And Manchester United will say, you can have him for free. We don't care. I don't know, man. Man United, they're it's in trouble. Be a they're terrible in decision for Bayern. And Manchester United will be the happiest people on the block. Uh, yeah. Well, let's let's look at Crystal Palace, who spanked him here, and Glasner, man, with his very attacking three, style. Three football. months in charge, man. This man is revolutionized. We made our manager list, and we both put him pretty low, like either bottom four or five. I think I put him like fourth from bottom, and you put him like second from bottom. Right. He's got to be. Company. He's gonna. He's got to go up now, right? Oh, yeah, he's got to be, I would say, jump five, six spots the way that they're playing right now. But it also comes down to Michael Elise is healthy. Brichie Eze Brichie is healthy. Right. And he's giving him freedom, man. Yeah. I just. Mateta, that's the guy I was thinking of. He's healthy. And ever since he's tucked his shirt in, he's been on fire. So He's always tucked his shirt in, but he's finally fucking making it work, man. I will say yeah. that. Like I mean, against him, United, him they made him have look... always been switching back and forth. Who's starting for Crystal Palace? I don't know, Mateta or Edward. Mateta has finally gone on a run, done the business, and is playing fantastic. United made him look like prime Ronaldo. Oh, dude, he cooked R9. Johnny Evans over there. That and Casemiro. Back. Speaking of Casemiro, how about Michael Elise cooking Casemiro twice? Which time, dude? Like, like you said, he... Oh. Casemiro looked like a fucking fish out of water, dude. Yeah. He does Playing not center play back. center back. He does not. Not. Cooked him for uh, that first goal, that's for sure. Just like, hey, here's a little shimmy sham. But the you worst blinded. part of that whole first goal was not Casemiro 
getting shimmy shammed. It was the fact that no one challenged Olise for like 10 yards. And then he almost missed. Like he didn't know whether to shoot or not. And he's like, oh, no one's going to challenge me. I guess I'll roll the ball in the back of the net. Dallow and Johnny Evans were looking at each other like, you get him. No, you get him. Yeah. Yeah. Palace made United look old, man. Old. I got to say, though. So we've talked about best players, best young player, best manager. For me, the worst signing of the season. Dude, it's got to be Mason Mount. Is that a discussion or a statement? It's, it's, it's my statement. Like it should be a statement for everybody. It's, it's my the statement. Worst signing. They have they have set a record because they now have the worst signing of the season two straight seasons in Anthony and Mason Mount. So the guy just I mean, Bruno was out injured, wasn't playing. Mason Mount comes in. Couldn't tell you he was playing, man. Honestly, like the only player on Man United who looked like they gave a damn was Hoyland and Garnacho. Yeah, and then Ten Hog subs off Garnacho. What, 60 minutes in? It made no sense to me, but. Whatever. It just sums up that whole squad at this point. I mean, let's be real. This United squad, with or without Ten Hag, is probably a mid-table side. <laughs> yeah. I mean, barring Sheffield United and maybe Spurs right now, are they the worst team in the Premier League? Sheffield, right now. Yeah, Sheffield. Maybe and Spurs. Bright. I could throw Brighton in there. Tottenham, I mean, but yeah. in their last five games, only Sheffield United has a worse record. That's bad. And Tottenham. And Tottenham. Tottenham's won one out of their last. They've lost four in a row, so. Tottenham yeah. had a terrible schedule. But, yeah, Man United, dude, they've been absolute garbage recently. I mean, do, you, do they stand a chance against Arsenal? Or I mean, that's <laughs> been a bugaboo stadium for Arsenal. I know. Arsenal have won one in the last 16 at Old Trafford. I will say last season they got robbed. Robbed? Yeah robbed that goal that Odegaard, Odegaard yeah, yeah. Foul. anyways yeah. well I remember. that's last season we- I I think I think Manchester United will set a new club record for goals conceded this season and Arsenal are going to destroy them with the amount of space they have between their midfield and their defense and not only that but if Casemiro is still playing defense <laughs> yeah I just leave that there Percentage chance, I'm going to go with United maybe two and Arsenal 98. Oh, big win for Arsenal then coming this weekend. You heard it here at Prison Banter FC. I, I got Don't forget started. to buy your merch at Redbubble. Stickers, whatever you want, shirts, tank tops, hats, hats whatever you want. Yeah. We might come out with some laughable United stuff here soon because I mean, is there anything it's better? Laughable. Is there anything better right now than watching Man United suck? And just a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, make sure to check us out: Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and like and subscribe here on YouTube. But someone picked them to finish eighth place this season. Just saying, that guy. So until next time, my friends. How low is Man United going to go? Let Let us us know. know. (laughs) Until next time, we love you. Cheers. As always, cheers.